Okay, big project and I'm cheating on you here. Normally what I like to do on videos is I like to do the first side on camera so you can see how it really goes in real life. But I had a, a sneaky suspicion that we would have to use like uh, you know seven hours of straight uh, video footage uh, in order to get this project done. So I did the passenger side off camera. It's completely done, put together, and uh, I'm going to take you through that same process where I know a little bit more. I'm sure I'll still fumble. I'm sure I'll still bust some knuckles and stuff like that on this. Uh, but we're going to do this video will likely be the front brake and front TC client suspension and I'm just gonna vlog style you know Mike's gonna you know get, grab what you know the, the footage while I work through this and get this uh, this set up but uh, the plan for this car is to do uh, doing full coilovers uh, and uh, and then Brembo brakes I'll show you all that stuff but uh, for now uh, what I'm doing because I'm not sure when my uh, when my Olin's TTX is going to be here, I'm doing a really ridiculous uh, uh, Olin's full race, but valve for the street uh, TTX uh, setup. They don't make an Olin's ro road and track uh, for this car. Uh, and so for the time being, uh, which I'm probably going to like this a lot and be disappointed and depend on putting it back on, we'll see how the, the TTX ends up being. But for the time being, we're doing a TC Klein kit which includes, so for the front, they have a full coilover. I wonder if this is a Coney in the front as well. I don't know who makes this for them, uh, but this is the front shock, front spring. And then uh, I'm doing camber plates because otherwise there's, I don't think there's any camber adjustment at all without this. Uh, but we have camber plate, uh, which will go on the top. I'll show you how I ended up getting that to work uh, because this is so tight on here that the little you know spring compressors I even went to Advance Auto and bought Auto Zone and bought a different type of spring compressor than Advance Auto has and you just can't can't get the clamp because the spring is too tight to the shock body here and the and the bump stop uh, and so we'll show you how I put how I figured out how to get that in the car so we have to put that together uh, and then the rear suspension is a Coney Yellow so Coney Yellow Shock, and, and you know, the main reason why I want to do this, it might be months and months before my Olin's gets here, Olin's gets here. Um, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be driving around as bouncy. I mean, the shock, the stock shocks are toast. I mean, the thing is like, it's riding around like a darn Cadillac with a broken front suspension. Uh, so I, I just don't want to ride around anymore like that uh, on this on this car. Even though it looks clean, it looks perfect, it's just the, the, the stock suspension is useless. So the rear setup is, I mean, here's the stock spring. And so the TC Klein spring is a still a progressive type spring. Um, I think we're doing linear springs with the TTX set. I'm not sure. Uh, and so this is the adjustable sleeve for the TC Klein setup. So that's for the rear. Uh, so Coney Yellow, separate uh, spring perch and, sh and, and uh, spring. So we'll do that as well, but that we'll see how, how far we get on this video. Uh, I did get some new style 24M wheels. These are coated. We'll have a video you know, showing you how to, how to care for these, denibbed, coated, dressed, all that stuff. Uh, so these wheels are going on the car and then I have some future classic spacers on it. And so I plan on having this car for a long time and so having multiple setups is not the world's worst thing. Uh, I doubt I'll be swapping suspensions a lot, but wheels. I have some BBS E87s coming as well for it. Uh, so let's start working on the front and uh, I'll get the brakes out when, you know, a little further into the video, I'll grab the brakes. But we're doing a 332 millimeter kit. Are they? Are they 332? Is it 332, 328? Yeah, 332 front, uh, four piston uh, front, and then I, th I wonder the, the rear's four piston too? We'll, we'll look at it. So I think it's four piston front and rear, but we have a 332 kit in the front and a 330 or 328 kit in the rear. Uh, I did them in black, uh, one of the stock Brembo colors. 
uh, and um, I did just the slotted version of the of the rotor. So we'll we'll show you how to do that. It's good, they come with good rich stainless lines. I'm doing this the 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 Brembo pads that come with the GT kits. I love the Brembo GT pads. I have them on several cars, and it just worked great. Uh, and so we thought about doing 355s on this, but then I'd have to run 18s, and I wanted the option to be able to run stock 17s if I wanted to. So let's get rolling. Now we don't have to do this, uh, but since I'm uh, doing the brakes anyway, I'm going to get the brake out of the way. It makes it a little easier to get to the suspension. So we're going to take our spacers off. These are 12 millimeter, I think I did in the front. What is it, the Future Classic? 15 millimeter I did in the front. So we'll see if that fits when the car's lowered. It worked really well with the car at stock height, but lower height, I'm not sure. And I just put these on a few weeks ago. These rotors are warped. I'm just gonna throw them away. They're, uh, they're no good. And I put some anti-seize on the hub so it would come off nice and easily. So we'll set these aside. We're gonna reuse those, hopefully. And then let's get our wires detached here so this little clip comes off. It's going to be a lot more fun in a video actually kind of talking like I know what I'm doing. We'll see. I'm sure I'll forget half the stuff that I did correctly. And so one of the things I'm not sure about how to do is this is a wear sensor. And the wear sensor isn't going to work with the with the Brembo's and so what do I do with that? Can we just code that out? I'm hoping. I don't know. All right, so these are a 15 or something, 16. 16 mil. These are super hard to get off on the other side. Probably have never been. I wonder if nah, these don't, these can't be fresh brakes or these can't be stock. They have to have been swapped. I mean, they look like BMW pads, but or you know, pads made for OE BMW. We're also going to do the fender liners as well and the little pork chop thingy underneath it. The brake line on this gets in the way. So you just have to pull it out and be careful not to strip the bolt. Suckers on there, good man. The other side was the same way. This was the hardest part of the whole project was getting this bolt off. There we go. Now we got it stuck. There we go. So that was the mid torque that got it off. Let's get some zip ties here so I can just tie this out of the way for now. It's so funny, everything's kind of clean right now, and by the end of this, I'll have a freaking explosion of tools everywhere. Did, uh, Scott did uh, dry ice treatment to the whole thing, and like <laughs> it does certainly makes it more enjoyable to work on. There's not a mess of wires in, or of uh, dirt every, all over the wires and all over the suspension and everything brakes look clean it certainly didn't look like this even though this is a nice clean example of an e36 it didn't look like this a few weeks ago and so 20 what was it 25 hours of fixing why is there oil on that bolt it's weird i think i've ever seen a wet bolt on a brake before. Maybe there's a little, it can't be a leak. We wouldn't have any brake fluid. So I've got Turner sway bars as well to put on. So the, uh, the driver's side doesn't have a wear sensor in the front, or sorry, passenger side. Got that out of the way, we'll take off. The speed sensor, once I get the brake off, it'll be easier to get to. So I'm just going to tie this up to the control arm. Normally I wouldn't hang it from it. Let's take the speed sensor off now. It's a little five millimeter. I think I already have it. OG blender bottles for all our hydrate specialists in the world that have to carry around water everywhere they go. I might even have one. I'll just start carrying water around if I have my own logo on it. So there's a little five millimeter little bolt and then this sensor. So it's advisable to not let your brake hang from the brake line, but we're gonna do a new brake line anyway. So, so I was gonna do all new control arms and all the bushings and stuff here, but 
it's not really necessary. And I like to do things that are unnecessary, but if I don't have to mess with bushings, I'm not gonna do it. All right, so the sway bar and link's hanging. Set that up here. Let's take this off. Little hammer. There it goes. So, now, this has to come off. I'm sure you can trim it to make it work. I just freaking get rid of it. I leave it in the rear, but I gotta I get it off on the front. So, we're gonna take these three bolts, and then I've gotta do some mangling, which you're gonna get real upset about. It's my car, not yours, so don't worry about it. You can take it easy on yourself. You don't have to get all been out of shape when it's not your car that's the beauty of watching me screw up my car that way you don't have to get angry but just my advice be a better life we won't show them when I get a little nickaroo on the uh, hub on the other side but it's gonna explode Mess with the structural integrity. I did a little, zzz, zzz, little. I may end up doing that on this side too, but. So these brakes require some Mormon fabrication as well, which I know you guys love to watch. Ah. We won't be reusing those because we're going to chop this puppy off. Let's see if I can do this one a little more efficiently than the last side where it was a. Uh, is a bit of a bloodbath. It's an E36. E36 aficionado's nightmare. So, let's see where the easiest place to cut through this is. There's gotta be a better way to do this. I mean, so, I don't have a hub press, but, you know, these are put on before the hub. And then this is a little tricky to get, get to here. So this is where we just start cutting. Cutting and hoping. This little guy might do it for us. A little three inch cut off. Yeah, 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 that's gonna be way more. Yeah. <laughs> it's the part that I don't like, getting pelted by heat sparks. That'll work. Cool, we're almost through it. Just try not to hit the steering knuckle or the hub this time. Call fabrication here at Obsessed Garage. It's fab shop. Aren't you glad that I got an E36 now, Mike, so I can do all the stuff so you know what not to do? Okay, I'm almost through. Now, so we start prying stuff. This is when it gets ugly. Turn the camera off. I'm doing it way cleaner than the other side. You should have seen me mangling. Look at that. So, we got through that. And we got almost through that. If I get underneath there. Man, it looks like I know what I'm doing. I can't believe you're ruining a perfectly good, a perfect car. That's what they told me about the Civic. I like to ruin stuff. It's my thing. 
obsessed ruin stuff. I can just get on there. Oh, I got it. Boom. Look away, people. Look away. Look away. <laughs> funny though because I've hung out and watched many of a mechanic do work people think that like the BMW text like don't rip into stuff you know this is the way it goes I just gotta bend it a little bit more close why do I still have glass my eyes are sweating oh shoot let's rip the front bumper off There you go. That's how you do it. We don't need that. Lightweight. If you think that was bad, just wait. Just wait. It's about to get gnarly here. So now, doing the brake first. Let's just freeze up space so we can get in here to do this part. All right, so what we're gonna do is there's a bolt here, here, and here. Uh, and so I'll just take these three out. They're 18 millimeter bolts. You take these three out and we're good to go. And then we take the ones off the top. These have Loctite on them, so I might have to use the impact again. No joke, man, getting these ones off. <clears throat> See, even when it's loose, it's still grabbing crazy. I'm gonna get some replacement bolts for when, when we do the, uh, the new suspension. Yeah, it doesn't fit. Let's try the right angle one. Ow. See? Bunch of red Loctite on there. Sucker does not want to come off. Now, we need to break the other one loose. I mean, we're not having much room. I should be using the impact socket on that. I don't remember the passenger side being quite this difficult. It's no joke. here and then the steering knuckle will drop down this one isn't as hard okay piece of cake so now so what I do is take the bolts off the top How much red Loctite there was in there, it's crazy. They must do that because, you know, all, all the other BMWs have a cup that sits in this, you know, this big knuckle right here. Uh, and so, you know, that's holding the whole weight of the car, those two bolts, I guess those three, a little tripod. Right. We're gonna reuse this thingy. So we'll take this off, throw a little sensor clip. Okay, so now let's lower the car and get these top ones off. We'll drop the factory suspension out. And we won't make the mistake that I made on the other side. I'll show you that in a minute. Off the hood, I just put a new uh, hood, the hood um, insulation on the car. It's funny, I, you see how much tighter it is now? It was, I didn't realize mine was drooping like four inches on there. And I got my new, what are those things called? The hood thingies? Struts, yeah, I got those new. All right, so we've got 
three 13 mils right here to take off. And these are easy enough to just do by hand. And then the suspension will drop out. Set these over here. Put one hand on the shock. These shocks are pretty darn light in comparison to a other car shocks. And it drops out. So the mistake I made is this is a strut tire reinforcement plate. I didn't put this on earlier and I had to take and drop the suspension down and put it back in. So don't forget that. But we're gonna clean this all up. But before I forget, I wanna clean this up in here so that way I don't get any crunchy sand or anything like that or get it out of the way. And you can use whatever you want. I just use glass cleaner. I don't need anything special. And just that's, that's about the extent. And then let me clean this thing up. And then this is gonna slide right over top of our camber plate and you won't even know it's there. Scott's gonna be watching and saying, I could have dry ice cleaned that in 10 seconds. Said, You're right. Someday, someday I'll have my own dry ice thingy. But then I'll just be blowing that dirt all over the place. I'm gonna have to have a dedicated dry ice room, like a booth. That's what I need. It's what everybody needs. Nothing like old invisible glass. You can do whatever, you can do lots of stuff with invisible glass. It's gonna be the freaking cleanest E36. It's gonna be good. Like, why is there all this grease all over it? Are they driving through grease? I don't think they'd grease this. We'll find out when it starts making all kinds of noise. I gotta find out from the rack doctor where my rack is. So we could do our cooling system. Might make sense to send it off to the interior first. I mean, I've got a lot of car projects to work on, so if it, if it, it takes them a little while. I don't want it to be down there for six months, but unnecessary, but necessary at the same time. All right, so we take our camber plate and we slide this on here. And then we want to push it. So this is the driver's side front. So there's a little little uh, thingy on there that tells us which way it needs to go. So it needs to go like this. And then we have to push it all the way back. The suggestion is you push the camber plate all the way back for caster. So it should, these little bolts here should be pointing all the way back, but we'll tweak it again when we get it in the car. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna put this camber plate on the car. And then I'm gonna bolt this up with the spring on it. And then we're going to pull jack it up into place. And, uh, and then we'll put the top nut on. The top nut is only hand tightened with a little Loctite. So we don't wanna, you don't wanna go too tight on that. You know, I like the dining bolts way better. They look more appropriate, they're not shiny. I don't like this shiny. So I did this. This took me at least a couple of hours to figure out a system that would work because I don't have like a tabletop spring compressor. And so we're just gonna use the car to compress it for us. The weight of the car and the pole jack. tighten that down too much. Okay, so I'm gonna take this thing and we're gonna take these top two. Because we have camber plates, we're gonna use the camber plate bolt, not the bolt that came with these. By the way, there are no instructions, at least I couldn't find them anywhere for this stuff. So I'm just having to wing it. 
So if somebody sees something I'm doing wrong, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. So we're going to take our spring. So I took my spring perch and pushed it all the way down to the bottom. Bottom it out as far as I can get it. And then I want to take the shock. This is the part I didn't realize, that the shock can come out. Because I'm like, oh man, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm never going to get this spring on there. And so this is the part that I had to figure out. But I don't even know how I figured it out. So we pull the shock all the way out. And then we push the bump stop all the way down. Put the spring aside here. And that way we have less distance to, to compress the spring. Since I push this down as far as it will go and I push the bump stop out of the way, now it looks like you got plenty of room. The problem is we got a camber plate that's this thick. And so we need this spring to compress. But you'll see, I mean, there's no, the little spring compressors you buy from the store, they have, they have to get around the lip of the spring, otherwise it pops off. Uh, and so I tried two different spring compressors and played with that for an hour or so until I you know, decided uh, to put it on the car. Actually, the first thing I just tried to do was I put it on the car and I didn't realize that it was pushing the shock down into the, into the, you know, into the whatever, or pushing the piston down into the shock. And so once I realized that, uh, well, before I realized that, I tried to compress the spring, that didn't work. And then when I figured out that this could be pulled out, then we do with the procedure that I'm about to show you right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on. Now, uh, I'm not super worried about, uh, about this setup with Loctite and all that because this is gonna be on the car for 50 miles, who knows, not, not very many miles. So let's put this on. So if you're not doing this on a lift, it might actually be easier. You just need a floor jack and you can jack this up into place. So take this bolt and you have to, you have to like bend this on. You have to kind of bend it a little bit to get it to open up. It's really tight. almost there and then take a bolt I need to get some appropriate wire brushes that's not doing anything there's not lining up the TC Klein stuff is okay but it's not it's not my usual quality a little, it's like it's close to being janky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the way they ride. Mm -hmm. well, I'm waiting to see. Yeah. All right. right now, it's not riding so great with the old bolt lining up, but. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta keep it until I decide. If I, uh, I don't like the fancy stuff. And you'll be getting the fancy stuff on a fire so day. <laughs> Give you 1800 for it. Yeah, you do like a show up early for something that I needed help with, and that's and then I feel bad and give you everything, give you some TTXs. That's how you get me. Everybody thinks I'm such a jerk. I'm a pretty freaking nice guy. Now, selfishly, I just want it out of my sight, but it works out for everybody. There we go. Just had to get a little angry with it. Okay, so let's assemble this thing now. Not much assembly to it, it's two parts, three pieces. Spring. Make sure that's pulled out as far as it'll go. Then hat, then guide. And this will guide up into the uh, into the camber plate. So 
just set that there. We're gonna have to come up with the car a little bit. I'm gonna have to get a little ladder. And we need a pole jack. And just set that right on the flat spot of the lower control arm. Make sure pole jack is flat. And then we'll just guide it right up into the camber. Camber plate. So this would be all a whole lot easier if you had like a bench or if they just freaking put it together when you buy it. That would be way better. But it's not that difficult. So if you were on jack stands, you're doing this, you could just put a floor jack under the control arm and just make sure that little guy gets up in that hole. Jack it up. And so you can see, since we have the spring perch all the way down, it means we have to compress this a little less. So what'll start to happen is the spring, or the, what do we call this, the shaft, whatever you wanna call it, the, the, the shock compresses, so it goes down into the shock body. And so we have to go up there and grab it with a pair of, uh, just put a pair of needle nose on and just pull it back through. And then we'll put the nut on with a little Loctite. And you just put it on by hand. So that should be good. Let me get a little ladder. Be right back. So we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite and they give me a little, they give you a little stainless little bolt. I don't think you need a washer or anything, but I don't know. It, it doesn't tell you. I'm just winging it here. So just take the needle nose and just pull it up through, but I'm gonna have to just compress it a little bit more. Right to the edge where we start lifting up the car. Put a little Loctite on. Way easier than trying to use a spring compressor. And then they make it very clear on the camber, camber bolts or the camber plates that you do not want this torqued, just hand tightened. I mean, it's gonna be under load. It's gonna be compressed, so it's not going anywhere. You can't fit a socket on there anyway. All right, so now we're gonna to torque the bottom bolts down and then then we'll start working on the brakes. So you can see, that took a little while to figure that out. First time I did it, I'm like, man, this is gonna work perfectly. I also didn't know that there was a little, that little, that little guide washer. I didn't know that that was there either. And then the recommended height setting on this, the TC Klein does give you a, which is really nice. They do give you a whole setup guide of what, what to set for the street, what to set heights. And so the height recommendation is to be, have the bottom, the bottom lock of the spring perch at the bottom of the threads. And that's it, right there. Okay. So let me just check, make sure these are tight. But Matt, you gotta put it under load to tighten the bolts. Get out of here, you freaking idiots. There's no bushing anywhere. This isn't touching anything. But my daddy told me. I'm your daddy. Now, this is the part that you're gonna get really sketched out about. Let's get, uh, let me clean up a little bit here and then I'm gonna get the brakes out and show you what's up. All right, now comes the fun part. If you've never gotten a set of Brembo's, they come in a brown box, the same size as this, that this slides out of. And then you get this magical awesomeness. And the rotor is in here. This is a 332 millimeter slotted oh, amazingness. First thing you gotta do is take the sticker off, 
do not tighten because you see these things, they, the uh, hardware moves around a little bit. You don't want to mess with that. A little Tarex on there, let that sit. That's all that's in here. I know you're going to cry yourself to sleep, but I'm just throwing this box away. <laughs> then we got our bracket, which we're going to address here in a minute. It took me, how long was that? Maybe an hour or so to figure out how to do it. And then I just started trimming. And then this is the magic. <sighs> yeah, buddy. Sick. Pretty cool. Okay. So then you get the box out of the way. I'll go throw that in the garbage. And this is what we're going to work with here. But before we can do any of this, we've got to, and they are good rich lines that come with the Brembo, so you get your brake line, and then we get our washers and our brake on our bolt. And before I start messing with any of this, I'm going to coat the rotors or coat the caliper right here in front of your eyes. So I wanna get a, my first layer of CarPro Deluxe on here while it's off the car. All that sticky stuff off. The other thing I'll do while it's off the car here is you're supposed to wipe, wipe, the, wipe it down with some brake cleaner. Kinda of like this, I've been uh, Loving it up a little bit more ever since I got metal in like every fingertip of my entire hand. Michelle was having a field day digging it out. Probably still have some in me. That was when I did the Tesla suspension. So, learned my lesson on that. We do a little brake cleaner on the uh, face to get the, they put this oily stuff on there. Ooh. Put this oily stuff on there so that it doesn't rust in the box. But you gotta clean it off. And that's sufficient. Your first, first bedding of the brakes will take care of the rest of it. Then we're gonna prep these for coating. I'm gonna coat this and this. And I just wanna get a first coat on it before we start cutting stuff apart. Remember BMW bros, this is my car. I'm allowed to cut it. You're not allowed to tell me I'm not. I won't let you. So I'm using some CarPro eraser on here, which is an isopropyl alcohol solution. I always pretend like there's like a few people here that haven't watched a million videos that I've done. I guess we do get some new subscribers here and there, so it's not a bad idea to let everybody know what I'm doing. So this is just preparing it for the coating. It's brand new, so it doesn't need a lot of prep. And then we take our, this is a, this is a wheel and caliper, a higher temp specific coating from CarPro called Deluxe or Deluxe, however you want to say it. And then we're just going to put it on and wipe it off a minute later. And this will just make them a little easier to clean. 20 minutes to do this. So, especially if you have some uh, bottle that's kind of laying around. You just, I'm always doing all kinds of wheels and tires and brakes and stuff like that, so I always have a half used bottle that I can grab and do what I'm doing. We'll leave that on there for a second. And what we're gonna do the face of this too because you can see a good chunk of this. Just make it a little easier to clean in the future. And then this towel is gonna be a throwaway towel. But that's it. I mean anybody can do this. You don't need to be some detailing expert. Just do what I did. Use an isopropyl alcohol solution. You could you could do like a 30, 30, 30% 30 alcohol solution. If you didn't have, just to get some IPA from Walgreens and 
prep it doing doing it that way. Or you can buy some buy some uh, a fancy obsessed garage bottle and some Car Pro eraser if you want to do it regularly like I do. Do it the right way. So that's the first coat. We'll do two coats of Deluxe and one coat of Gliss afterwards. But I want to let that sit for three hours or so. Oh. Now, here's the issue. This thing doesn't fit. So I was playing around with 37 different ways and so in order for it to fit, we have to flatten out the, and we'll call, let's call these the ears of the steering knuckle. So this has to get shaved down because, I don't know if you can see through those holes, that ain't lined up, right? And so we've got to shave this steel knuckle down. It's gonna make a big old mess. But we're gonna shave this down in order to get this to fit. Now, I don't think I can be accurate enough with a cutoff wheel to try to cut through that. I guess I could. But if I just cut off wheel and you just, it shows it as flat. But what I'm gonna use, I used it on the other side, was I used a, um, my die grinder and just worked at it. I wonder if I can do it really precisely with this little bro. That's gonna work. I'll notch it with this and then. And before anybody has a heart attack, let me show you this. Instructions. Trim. I'm not lying to you. And I think it's supposed to go straight up. Here we go. So since I got it, oh boy. I think this is gonna fit. Uh, okay. I can't tell if it's going to catch my junk on fire or what. It's hot. Ah. Whew. That's real man stuff right there. So then I can take this guy and just do one of these. Let's see if it fits now. Yeah, that took like a fifteenth the amount of time. And perfect. Nice. Now let me vacuum this crap up. Cut that bottom one a little, a little tight there. Shoot. Okay, so we then take our bracket. Shoot, I think the bracket goes that way. The bolt's coming through the back. So on the other side, I stood there and shaved it for freaking hour with the uh, die grinder. This side got a little smarter. And I got a much cleaner looking... Oh shoot, I did it again, didn't I? Forgot to paint it. God dang it. This is not advisable what I'm about to do here. Don't do that. And we'll get a little little stickeroo on here. Huh. Yeah, this'll this'll flatten it. 
called a little bit of paint's better than no paint. So we were racking our brain trying to figure this thing out. And then, of course, Bryce came and got the instructions. What you got? Grinding, painting. It's a full fab shop here I got going on. So let's put the speed sensor back in. The snake's around here, I think. Yeah, it comes up here. Like that. And then this bolt goes back in. And you take this little clip that I had earlier, and you clean it with some eraser, because that's what I had handy. And we screw this on the post. Like so. So let's do the fender liner and the sway bar. The sway bar I'm not gonna be able to attach today because I need the adjustable end links. So we're gonna pull this, this in this completely open here so the sway bar should be pretty easy to do. But let's take our fender liners out and put our new fender liners in while we're here. Oh, this is going to be a very comprehensive video for you. All right, man, this is the best front sway bar I've ever done in my life. Two bolts, two bolts, comes out. Awesome. This is sway bar. Just to avoid my own personal confusion, I like to set the sway bar down the way it came out. That way. I can put the other one back in the same. So I'm gonna need to reuse those. But I need to put some new bushings on. This calls for a Viper chair, sit down. Sit down sesh. Yeah, oh yeah, that's good, that's a good chair. That's a darn good chair. It's shameless product plug, available at obsessedgarage.com. Best money you will ever spend in your life. And guess what? Viper Chair has Viper fans, which is sick. Chair fans. It's not a fan on a chair, but it's a fan that you put on the wall. Oh. Something tells me this is gonna be a front suspension only day. Spray a little bit of the old Lithium white grease or whatever the heck this crap is. Spread it around in there. This keeps your sway bar from making noise. This guy goes on right here. If you can get it on there. Boom. Just like that. Told you I was your daddy. See how easy that was? I like that it's blue. Actually, it's a purple car. It would be better if it wasn't blue. <laughs> it's all right. A little ball peen, a little 16 ouncer. Just like that. Wow, that's meaty right there, dude. That is meaty. Can't get in my pocket with the freaking gloves on. Get the bolt out. All my suspension problems always get blamed on the uh, on the sway bar. It's never once been the problem. Boom. Sway bar in. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me what I need to do with this wear sensor thingy. Oh, we need to do the fender liner first before I put the brake on. I don't have to, but it's probably smart to do so. So we use a little high speed guy. interesting that the even the new one has this little scrape spot it's almost like maybe that's maybe they shave something off there I don't know it's kind of weird and then there's some up here how you're doing this makes the car feel good so that's the that's the cleaned up version. It was pretty gnarly before. That's the move right there, dude. New 
fender liners. That's good. You just gotta fight for it, that's all. Got it. It's cool when, it, when you put it back together properly, it all snaps in nice and tight. Yeah, that was all broken right there. Sick. This kind of stuff makes me happy. That makes me angry. Ugh. So, so sweet. We're gonna coat this real quickly while we're under here. Because we can. That's awesome, dude. Really awesome. If I sell this thing someday, somebody's gonna have to pay me like 200 grand. Because the Civic didn't have any of this melty stuff. The Japanese cars stay together better. They don't melt. Is that not cool or what? This is the biggest mess I think I've ever made in here. Put a little deluxe on here. I don't know if it's gonna do much, but it seems like fun. Darkens it up a little bit. Can't wait to polish this thing. I'm gonna do it at the end this time. Pretty sick, huh? Pretty sick. That's all I gotta do. All right, now the brakes. What else am I missing? <laughs> all right, so what I'm gonna do is put the brake together first and then we'll take the old lines off and make the swap. Put this bro on. This part's a little shady here and then it doesn't really line up very well. And Now the holes, like this bolt, there's a lot of play in it. Lining up is overrated. Put that in there. Boom. Then put a brake on. Washer, washer. And then the magic happens. It's the best part of any, any car deal. I feel like I've graduated in life by having proper brakes for all that high speed Publix breaking into the OG parking lot that I do. that looks. Is that not like the coolest thing you've ever seen on an old school, old school BMW looking awesome like that. And now with it on the car, I'll do another coat of, uh, of gl uh, gl I'll do one more coat of Deluxe and then a coat of Gliss. Torque these to spec here real quickly. All right, make sure this spins. All we're gonna do is put a brake line on, which is gonna go right here. So once you do the brake line, then I can remove the caliper. So I'm gonna put some gloves back on, get my little drip pan. We'll do the switch on this real quickly. I have to navigate the maze of chaos. It's gonna be my next hire is a uh, cleanup assistant where they just follow me around and put everything away and hand me tools. Just decided that right now. Pay someone at 80 grand a year, is that a good deal for that, that job? You're gonna see, I'll get 400 emails. 80 grand, oh man. <laughs> By 80 grand, I meant $8 an hour. And you work 10,000 hours. <laughs> Yeah, 
in a year. Just filled with all Jeff's Mustang fluids. So Freaking heavy. So I need an 11 millimeter and something else. 17, I think. That one out of there. Make sure we run the new one properly. It's really that simple. Brakes are the, other than having to do all that cutting and stuff, brakes are pretty easy to do. I always dread brakes, like it's gonna be like the hardest thing and it's really pretty simple. Especially since I got that bleeder, I, I just gotta get the right cap for this car. And so I might have to do the traditional bleeding method on this one, but that's it. So what I do is I'm gonna tighten this down and then I'll go, I gotta tighten the bolts on top. I'm gonna go and just check all the all the bolts on this. You know, before we wrap, let me, oh shoot, that wasn't even on, was it? Freaking moron. Now we're in. And you just have to make 57 turns with your slippery gloves and wrench. But I bought that motive brake bleeder and I didn't think to buy all the caps. I, I doubt the Tesla cap's gonna work on this car. We'll see. I've got to get the new, the other cap for this car so I can use it. But we might just do a traditional brake bleed on this one. Let me get my caliper out of here. Just got to figure out what to do with my wear sensor because this wear sensor doesn't work on aftermarket pads. Brake line in the right spot like that. Oh God, dang it! It's all starting to fall apart. I need to hang it up for the day. It's starting to, starting to get smacked. So let me just look at those sway bar end links. I, I'll play with those off camera. But that's it, bros. Look at that. That's the front suspension. I'm gonna do some, uh, wait for my adjustable sway bar end links to come. I'll put another coat of, of Deluxe, another and a coat of Gliss on top of that and the rotor hat. Um, I'll go and check all the torque spec of the bolts. Um, I'm only putting one coat of coating on the fender liner, but the fender liner's done. Uh, I don't need any, I don't think I need any control arms or anything like that. All the bushings and everything are good in the front, so I don't plan on changing any of that stuff. We do have the factory X brace to put on, but uh, that's the front. Um, next video will be the rear. So thanks for watching. Not too bad, I'm not bleeding. This is from, ooh, that's a stinger. See that one right there? That one hurt. That was from the rear suspension the other side. Anyway, thanks for watching. More E36 coming soon. We're making this a, uh, a, a real applicable, stay tuned for more crazy car. See you soon.